Okay, I got my uh, I got my drop shot rig here. We just tied up a little while ago. Uh, one of my favorite worms to throw on a drop shot. You can throw just just about anything on a drop shot. You know, creature baits, tubes, uh, bass tricks, whatever, a swim bait. Uh, but my favorite, one favorite bait, if I had to choose one overall, would be a six inch ST Robo Worm. This is my color, Aaron's Magic. Um, I got my one knot, got my got to uh, drop shot hook. There's three basic ways of rigging this on a nose hook. Um, you got the Texas rig style, which is with, with the, the O'Shaughnessy I use with the rebarb. It's really good. And, you know, Texas rig is basic. Most of us know how to do that. And the nose hook, you can wacky rig it. And there's certain situations where this is the way to go. I mean, there's a lot of times when when it's over the traditional way, this will will outfish the traditional way, like unbelievable. There's times, uh, there's also times when it's too slow and it takes longer to get to the bottom. It, and when it does fall, the, the ends of the worm will actually, kind of like a sink or something, they'll actually move on the way down. But it does slow the fall down like 50%. So instead of going right to the bottom, it's gonna take a while. So in certain situations, you know, experiment with it, try it that way. There's also the, the traditional nose hook. And when I nose hook, I barely, I barely get any plastic. You know, you can see that. It's just, you know, I want the worm to move really freely. I want it to, to be right at the tip of the worm, not, not too much worm. It, it kind of messes action up when you go through too much worm. It makes it kind of funny and you actually get line twists easier too. It actually keeps the line twist down to it that way. Uh, the way I prefer is, is, you know, go back about a quarter inch. Go back about a quarter inch in the worm. See if I can show you. St you know, just go a quarter inch on the salt, the belly of the worm. Go straight into the worm, about halfway. And then bring it out towards the nose. This is by far the best way. Um, I come out just to the point of the hook is you know, right just under the surface of the worm. Uh, this actually makes the worm in one with the, the hook. So the, the worm is not moving like it would on a nose hook. And normally it kind of moves around, swivels around. This is actually connected to that hook. So when that hook, whatever that hook does, that worm's gonna follow behind it. It increases action, unbelievable. It's not as much as like when it's on a nose hook, it kind of moves, this is like, the right action, like a, like a fish or something actually kind of coming up, it actually lifts and the whole worm kind of looks more natural and it works better to, uh, to me. For me, I, it, it's more I prefer it over the traditional. Um, while drop shotting, you know, it's, it's incredible rig for catching fish, you know, vertical or, you know, straight down. Uh, I do that probably, you know, 30, 40% of the time. Uh, the other 70, 80% of the time, I'm casting it. Like, like you would a Texas rig, a Carolina rig. I'm actually taking my rig and casting it. You know, if I didn't cast it out, you know, whatever distance, if you have an odd, a brush pile or a rock pile, whatever it is that you're casting to, cast to it. You don't need to get right on top of it and drop it straight down. This rig is actually more effective casting. Uh, leader lengths vary. You know, in the spring, I tend to use the shortest leaders I do through the whole year, uh, or in January, February, I'll use like a one inch to a three, four inch leader. Um, as you get into the post-spawn, summer, uh, I, I tend to go to the length of the worm or double the length of the worm. So anywhere from a you know, four or five inch leader to 12, 14, 15 inch leader, depending on where you're fishing. Um, you know, it, may, it may be 20 inches where you're at, maybe six inches. Uh, as I get into the fall and the winter, that's when I use my longest leaders. Um, and I vary, I mean, there's sometimes in the summer and spring I use long leaders. So sometimes in the summer when I use a two foot leader, but the fall and, and, and the winter time, I, I use the longest leaders usually, and I, I go up to a 30 inch leader sometimes, depending where you're at. Uh, normally on the lakes that we fish most of the time, you know, like a 16 inch leader is plenty, or you know, 12 inch, but I'm talking about, you know, some of the lakes in California that we used to fish with 25 feet visibility, and you know, I'd go like a, a 30 inch, 25, 30 inch leader. The drop shot, weight's very critical. Um, size, weight you fish. Um, you know, an eighth ounce is what I use the most, uh, down to about 30 feet of water. Um, it's just the rate of fall, the, the bait falls more natural. It doesn't just go out there and plump to the bottom. Uh, there are situations, you know, 
say for instance Buffalo, Lake Erie, Champlain, you know, a half ounce, three eighths ounce is, is barely enough. You know, you're getting out there, you want it to get down there as fast as possible and get to those fish as fast as possible and they just destroy it. I've seen bites at Gunnersville and uh, Wheeler where I wanted to get down there quick as fast as I could because if they saw it, they ate it. So there's situations like that. When in those situations, you know, quarter, three eighths, go at it, you know, experiment with it. But most of the fishing, when I'm doing a drop shot, I'm throwing an eighth ounce, 316. So you know, if the wind's, if one day I'm throwing an eighth ounce and the next day it's blowing 20 miles an hour, I'll go to a 316. You might need to go to a quarter ounce. But normally in a, in a tough bite where you're doing a drop shot to get bites and it's tough, uh, I go to the lightest possible. And after I throw it out and cast, you want to, you know, let it sink to the bottom. Most of the time, you can work a drop shot surface to the bottom. It's in between. It's, it's, it's all workable with a drop shot. Drop shot's excellent for catching suspended fish. It's not just a bottom bait, a bottom rig. What I do is I cast it out. Let's cast it out one more time. If you're watching me in the background, that's actually a good way to work it. It's kind of just kind of letting it sit, kind of hopping it a little bit. I'm going to cast it out, let it sink. Once the line hits the bottom, the weight hits the bottom, um, and another, you know, keep the rod loose in your hand. You don't want to grip it tight. I, I tend to hold the rod, the reel and rod in front of the reel, which gives you more leverage and more control. Balances the rod and reel a lot nicer. Um, it's just, you know, you can put a finger behind, but I do not like holding it like that. Traditional, I don't, I don't think, I think you lose a lot of leverage, so I tend to hold it in front of the reel. You know, with all rods, you can't really do that. This is a Mega Bass signature rod, and, and I kind of did some work to it so I could hold it like this. But to hold it in front like that is just, you got so much more leverage. And, you know, I put a finger on the blank, and a lot of people think that's for, you know, feeling the blank or feeling the bite. That's not true. Um, what I do is I keep that for leverage so I can kind of get that, keep that rod bouncing, and I keep it loose. So it's a, it's a, a big issue in, in, in spinning rods is they'll hurt your back, they'll hurt your elbow. They can damage your, you know, a lot of, they can cause a lot of pain uh, just because of the way you hold it. So I've, over there, oh, look at that, we got one just sitting there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the leverage, let me get this fish in here. The leverage, uh, it helps when you get a bite, you can kind of push down and pull. It, it, what it does is it locks that rod in your hand. So, I mean, you'd break this rod trying to pull it out of my hand. I mean, for sure, you, you could not get this rod out of my hand. Even my eight-year-old could probably hold it and you might snap, if you pulled it by a tip, you'd probably break the rod. It's, it gives you so much leverage. Um, but again, I hold the rod light, loose in my hand just to, to keep tendons and stuff at bay. No, not to stress anything else. I fish a lot. And it might help you if you don't fish a lot and you might go out there and you might fish once a week and, and strain your muscles. It's, it's not, especially if you catch a lot of fish, it, it just, it's better to hold the rods. Even bait casters kind of loose. Let's see how he ate it. Oh yeah, it's a little small mouth. They like that robo. It's micro, but again, uh, you know, with a drop shot, cast it out, let it hit the bottom, kind of, um, you know, we're gonna, you're gonna shake it, kind of hold the rod loose in your hand, it'll help, you know, holding it tight all day, it's, it's, it doesn't feel good. And the drop shot, most of the time, I'm kind of like swimming it, I'm kind of hopping the bait up, let it fall back to the bottom, hop it up. All I want to do is let the fish see the bait and most of the time they'll bite it. Be, uh, a lot of times you, not, you need to have that pause once the bait gets down to the bottom, the weight hits the bottom again, you want that bait to pause. Maybe fall a little bit, almost like a free fall. A lot of times I'll let it fall away to the bottom like so. Hop it back up again, shake it. And there's a lot of times when you might have to slow down and like dead stick it. There's a bite right there, right under the boat in six feet of water. So a lot, there's a lot of times when you kind of need to let it, just barely shake it. And I call that shaking the worm, not the weight. And that comes to bait, like Texas rigging too. A lot of times you want to shake the weight, not the worm. There's a drop shot a lot of times when the fish are really tough to catch. Shaking the worm and not the weight makes all the difference in the world. And that may happen sometimes, and that's totally normal. And it makes the manufacturers make more money. That's what you want to see. So experiment. You know, there's times when my weight is on the bottom 20% of the time, and there's times when my weight is on the bottom 100% of the time. So drop shines, if you learn how to do it, and you become a master at it, it will change your life of bass fishing. It is the most effective one rig that there is. I mean, honest to God, everywhere you go, you, overall you're not gonna beat a drop shot. 
And I know there's guys out there that'll never drop shot. And Kevin Van Dam made fun of me in the past and called it a sissy rig. And Van Dam also has a drop shot rigged up all the time. So even he has changed. So don't be afraid to experiment. Fish the bank, swim it down the bank, not touching the bottom very much, put a swim bait on there, a worm, whatever you want to do. It works for all it does is, all it does is suspend your bait off the bottom where a fish feeds most of the time. So it makes perfectly good sense is that it's a killer way to catch them. But good luck fishing to you. I hope this helps you. Next generation of performance is here. Royal Purple's new high-performance street motor oil, HPS. Fortified with zinc phosphorus anti-wear protection, HPS exceeds the demands of high-performance and modified engines. Magnified, HPS improves metal surfaces for longer engine life. HPS's high film strength frees up more power, reduces heat and wear, plus provides greater protection. The next generation of performance is here with HPS from Royal Purple, the performance oil that outperforms.